top five. Many people asked me Monday, what happened at Southside on Friday night? I was out of town. I'm cheating tonight. Uh, maybe we win the race and maybe we can find out. We've tried a new setup. I mean, we tried an old setup. We've tried a new setup. And it's just, you know, the track's slowing down. The tires are different. Everything's a lot different. So um, the run-ins with him's not our problem. Just not being here for the races is our problem. <laughs> here giving a few words of advice what are you doing now you just score now huh that's all you do is score yeah well I think the uh, Colorado Avalanche will sweep the series in four if you really want to know my opinion <laughs> wait a minute don't go nowhere John no. Everyone. Welcome to this edition of Southside Speedway Illustrated. Well, this asphalt turned into a battleground last week. It was a wild one. In the mini stocks, Chris Phelps found his first victory of the season. Tyler McCray continues to control the points. Both those drivers decided to start in the rear of the field last week. In the Charger event, Kevin Minner found victory lane for the first time ever in any racing series. It was an exciting night for the Minners. But now Minner sets second in the points. Brad Skelton controls the way. And Michael Greathouse, who's been dominant so far long, well, he got DQ'd for some uh, race altercations. And now he's third in the standings. In the Grand Stocks, John Eversall makes it number six for the season. But Bubba Hubbard's troubles continue. He was leading the points at one time. But again, last week, he suffered an early race incident that put him out of the event. He's fallen completely down to seventh in the standings. And in the late model race, well, Eddie Johnson out of Ashland picks up his sixth victory of the season. And behind him, it was Goad, Williams, Thacker, and Pond. Unusual names for the top five out here. As you can see, it was a wild night under a full moon here. Also joining me tonight, my buddy Mark Potter. Mark, some interesting things last week and uh, a few altercations in the Grand Stock. There were some rumors about uh, somebody possibly having a second car. Yeah, from what we understood, uh, Bubba Hubbard was going to have uh, two cars out here tonight to take care of uh, his buddy John Eversall. That rumor, of course, uh, was just that. It was a rumor. Nothing materialized of that, but we'll see the racing action coming up in a little while. A lot of rumors in racing, as we uh, heard last week from Christian Berry. Also, Shane Lockhart's been kind of off so far this season. All of a sudden, we find Shane Lockhart on the pole for the late model event. Well, that is a surprise. Uh, Bugs Harefield uh, last week uh, didn't allow a tear down when he started uh, finish ninth, uh, but I tell you what, they fined him $250. I just looked at the receipt, and yeah, they paid it, $250. Of course, come from Bugs, he says, I didn't pay it, but I tell you, somebody else does. They know what side the, uh, to butter their bread on. And now, uh, let's see, after that, he falls completely down to fifth in the points after running second to Johnson. Johnson controls the way over Wayne Grubb now. We're going to talk to some of these drivers and some of the others when we return with this issue. That's my brother Kevin. He loves to go fast. He loves to race. Matter of fact, there's only one way we can get him to stop. Hey Kevin, it's time to reload. Bullets has the only burger we're stopping for. We tried to get Kevin to try another leading burger. <laughs> he didn't think too much of it. Remember, if it ain't bullets, it ain't a burger. Welcome back to Southside Speedway Illustrated. We're with Bugs Harefield, the man of many controversies. 
Bugs, uh, first of all, last week you finished ninth. You wouldn't tear down. They disqualified you. Would, why wouldn't you tear down your motor? Were you cheating? Well, according to everybody else out here, I was. Uh, probably still am. Uh, I'm cheating tonight. Uh, maybe we win the race and maybe we can find out. But uh, no, I'm not cheating at all. It, last week I was leading the race, got knocked out, and come up to the come up from the rear and got back by fifth and I run into the fence over here on the back stretch and knocked the head of the tire and I got a lap down, come back to ninth. Car was, I spun it down here and the, on when Eddie got into me, spun it down here and got dirt all over the thing and then I come in and they were doing a spot check and they wanted to pull my head down and finishing ninth. I just didn't think it was feasible to pull it down at ninth place. I mean, I, I agree with what they're doing. It just kind of hit me wrong at the at the time that it was happening, and uh, I don't see no problem with the with the way they're doing it. I mean, the guys that run fifth and sixth, they deserve a a, a break if somebody's cheating in front of them. But uh, well, there's about 16 left, I guess that hadn't been looked at yet, so we'll get them as we get to them. We got all night, John. It looks like it's going to be early, er, early tonight, so uh, uh, we get a few of them every week. Yeah, all right. So uh, yeah, I mean, we're not getting anybody. We're just checking to be sure everybody's running with the same equipment. That's you found what, any illegal that's parts? What, that's what they're. That's what they want, and that's what we want. So you found any parts illegal? No. What about some stipulations? I've heard some rumors about the six car now. Once again, it could be just rumors, but that he's been found a couple times and and before qualifying with some illegal fuel or something, and y'all have asked him to remove it. Oh, uh, there was a late model last week. It had to change his fuel. Sure did. But I'm still cheating this week, as I have, have been for the last month. Uh, I, I don't see no problem with what they did. It just, you know, I I didn't think I was really doing no wrong. I was just just didn't want to pull it down and. Uh, I think I could have knocked the windows out of the White House and it wouldn't have made no more controversy than what I got out here for that. I mean, I didn't think I was doing nothing wrong, but man, it was terrible this week. So uh, hopefully we can pull it off tonight and I'll be glad to pull it all down right over. I got my motor stand in my, in my uh, motor lift to pull it out and I pull it down right, John, and I rebuild it next week and come back out here again. Now in the paper this week, uh, they come out with uh, this uh, stuff where you can be fined or you can be suspended. Uh, rumor has it that uh, they find you for $250. I think we got a receipt here somewhere where it says, yeah, there it is. It says Bugs Harefield paid his fine for $250. But, of course, we know you didn't pay it. No, I didn't pay it. Uh, you and uh, Southside Illustrators paid it. Uh, I appreciate y'all's contribution to the Harefield Motorsports and getting me back out here to race. Well, I'm sure we'll find the uh, Southside Speedway Illustrator on the hood of the car. Let's check in with Freddie Clark. He's got Shane Lockhart with him. Thanks, Mark, and it'll be interesting to see Bugs Harefield starting behind Eddie Johnson tonight, so we'll see if he remembers last week. Shane, a lot of people have been wondering when you're going to find Victory Lane, but your best qualifying attempt of the year it could be your night, finally. Well, I don't know. You know, we qualified second one, once this year. We've been, I thought we'd forgot how to get up there, and now I'm not sure I remember what to do. It's been a while. We've been struggling, but, you know, everybody's been working on the car, and uh, we went through and changed a bunch of stuff every week on it and keep throwing different things at it to see what it'll do, and, uh, and I don't know if we're on to something here or not, but uh, we're going to go out there and run it in 100 laps and see what it'll do. Something new you found, not back to the old setup. No, we've gotten away, you know, we've tried a new setup. I mean, we tried the old setup, we tried a new setup, and it's just, you know, the track's slowing down, the tires are different, everything's a lot different, so, um, you know, yeah, it's definitely a lot different. Well, Shane Lockhart got the car dialed in for the night, he hopes. It may be his night on K95 U-Crops night here at Southside Speedway. Let's go to Mark. He might have caught up with some of our Grand Stock drivers. Well, we made our way back over to the Grand Stock pit area now that Freddie's done talking with Shane Lockhart. And I tell you, Bubba Hubbard, uh, rumor was this week you were going to have two cars. I only find one here. you got to have another one out in the shed somewhere? Yeah, we definitely got another one. We're trying to sell that one, though. We're just trying to race this one right here. We're here to race tonight. Evidently, there's some conflict over the past couple of weeks. Uh, you've fallen all the way back to seventh in the point standings. Uh, a couple run-ins with uh, the driver of that car, number 98, known as John Eversall. you have anything for him tonight? Yeah, I mean, we always got plenty for him, but, I mean, I don't think the run-ins with him is not our problem. Just not being here for the races is our problem. What you're looking at now is what could be the center of controversy tonight. We'll find out. Kevin Grubb starts on the outside of row number one for the late model stock car wrecks. Let's check in with Freddie Clark upstairs. He's got all the racing action here at Southside Speedway. Last week, the Chargers closed the show. This week, they opened the racing action. Mike Greathouse and Brad Skelding on the front row. The top two stayed wheel to wheel for the first circuit, with Greathouse coming out on top as they worked off turn four. Further back, Urban Bell and Dell Hamlet were trading paint as they contested the sixth spot. 
Hamlet won that battle and started to work on fist spot, which was held by Kirk Stewart. The top two raced wheel to wheel for three seconds until Hamlet finally made his way by on the inside. Kevin Minner had started to, in, in the rear and worked his way to the mid pack before looping and leaving his mark in turn one. Great House led back to Green over Skelting and Tatum. The action quickly heated up for seventh between Dean Leslie and Bell. Back to the front and Skelting started to work on Great House, especially in turns three and four. Three of Bell, Leslie was getting sideways trying to work on Stewart, but as he slid high, Bell shot to the inside to retake one position. The mid pack continued to fight to the end, but it was Great House getting the win number seven over Skelting, Tatum, Hamlet, and Stewart. This week, Mike Greyhouse, let's talk about last week. What happened? I got taken out by a lap call. <laughs> okay, enough said on that one. You know, every time I happen to come to this place, uh, you one win, and two, you get the race wear money. So congratulations, another $150 bonus, but uh, pretty much of an easy win for you tonight, would you say? No, uh, Brad, he was right there in the corners pushing me a little bit. Uh, I don't know if someone was, uh, someone was on the track or what. I mean, that, before the first caution, I mean, the car was hooked up. I mean, I was out there just riding by myself, and after that, First caution, Brad was right there on my bumper. I mean, I could feel him all the way around the track. But I'm just glad there's 25 laps instead of 40 laps because I believe he might have would have gotten me. Well, seven wins for this young man already in 1996. Your winner of the Charger event, Mike Greathouse. Now time for the Grand Stocks and Wayne Clark claiming the pole with fresh rubber and Wally Motor. Six-time winner John Eversall starts second. It looked as if Eversall's outside lane was the way to go, but Clark came back on the inside. It ended for both as they returned into turn one. The top two tangled and headed for the wall as Hubbard flashed by to take the lead. The two continued to battle in the pits. Hubbard and Mason would now lead the field to Green. Hubbard took command under Green over Mason and Jarman. Eversall was starting to shove his way to the front with the ball ball duck becoming one of the Chevys as Eversall worked by and just behind something broke on Ray Ashworth's ride with Roy Carter Jr. also getting collected and then climbing Ashworth's ride. Hubbard was still in control as Green returned and Eversall was still trying to find his way back to the lead pack. Robbie Langford was starting to work on Jarman for third as Eversall closed in. Langford worked by on the inside of Jarman with Eversall following his truck tire track. Now Eversall chose the high group to work on Langford, but Langford held strong on the inside. Eversall finally won out for third as the fight for first heated up with Mason applying bumper pressure to Hubbard. Hubbard held firm for the win number four over Mason, Eversall, Langford, and Jarman. We talked to you a little early. Get to talk to you again, Bubba Hubbard. Altercation in front of you. Finds you in Victory Lane. Right. Yeah. It's good to be here. And um, we were just riding around in third, waiting to see what happened. Wayne and Johnny had some problems, and um, like like Johnny said last week, it helped me get over what happened between me and him last week. So I guess it was just racing. It turned out that way again. Could you really see what happened up there? I. It looked like to me they were both running real hard and taking each other's room, and that's what happens when you get too close to each other. Well, one win per month out here. Bubba Hubbard scores victory tonight. Well, we're staying with the gentleman that picked up the most spots tonight in the race. John Eversall, first question. What happened in turn one with you and Wayne Clark? Well, I got a, I got a fairly good start. and We were even through one and two, and then when we came out of three, I had him beat coming out. And I don't know whether he pushed up or got loose or what happened, but he took me out going down the front straightaway. Well, one thing's for certain. We're seeing a new John Eversall this year. You went out. You knew you had work to be done. You still come home third. Is that because you know you're leading in the points? Yeah, we knew we couldn't finish way back because we want to keep the points lead. And I think a third place finish definitely helped us tonight. We, we had to get through that traffic. And I did my best with the, with the tire that we had to stick on there. It was an old tire and it, it made the car handle a little different, but car ran real good and we came on through. That was a heck of a drive for John Eversall. He comes home third today. Local racetracks will become super speedways when NASCAR hits the asphalt. The one-third scale stock cars are back in action and racing near you. Eagle Cup cars and champ cars will thrill you lap after lap. Kids love the cars, parents love the price, and everyone loves the action. It's the NASCAR series. Don't come if you don't like good racing because that's all you're going to get.
Play action heated up in the late model feature. Kevin Grubb and Shane Lockhart contesting the top spot as Matt Williams, Chris Dodson, Bubba Farmer, and Wayne Balch collect in turn one. One lap, one caution, and back to green with Kevin Grubb showing the way over Lockhart, Urban, and Harefield. Right away, Harefield started to charge. Working to the inside lane, he took third from Urban with Johnson following through the open door. Next, Harefield catches Lockhart and again works his way to the inside to get the spot and once again brings Johnson through for third. Lockhart continues to fade through the pack and now Harefield becomes the defender instead of the aggressor. Johnson looked high and low but could not get a run to move on Harefield. Lockhart finally gave in and brought his ride in for service. Up front, Kevin Grubb was holding a 10 car length lead as brother Wayne started to assault on Urban for the four spot. With a quick caution tightening the field, Harefield now would be on the rear deck of Grubb. Several times a nudge to the rear as a reminder from Harefield with Johnson a car length behind. Even a hard shot off turn two didn't unsettle the youngster. Wayne Grubb finally got his ride to work on the outside to bypass Urban for the four spot. Up front, Kevin still showed the way, but Johnson worked to the outside to take second from Harefield. And now he would try his hand against Grubb. Nose to tail with less than 20 laps remaining in the event, Grubb had wrestled the lead from Lockhart, held off Harefield, and now faced Johnson. Bumper to bumper, and Johnson looking to the high side as Grubb protected the low side. A shot to the inside coming through turn four. On lap 94, Johnson to the inside going into turn one. And the two tangle coming off turn two, handing the lead to Harefield. It would have been Kevin's second win, Eddie's seventh of 96, but it would be neither's tonight. Harefield controlled the remaining laps to take the win over Urban, second a foot over Estes, followed by Ricky Johnson and Jim Thacker. Well, Bugs, the uh, man who got involved with you last week got involved with somebody else. You came out victorious. Well, it looked like you let Eddie go there, though, midway. Well, I couldn't catch him enough to hit him. <laughs> but uh, I got up under Kevin a couple times. He went high. He left the door open, and it would, it would cut down off at bottom. And I knew if uh, Eddie didn't get on the outside that he might would be in some trouble right, John. And uh, Kevin, he was running a kind of an awkward line there, but I was, you know, I was being patient, and I was hoping he would win his first race here. He sure does deserve it. And... Uh, I was just having to be at the right spot at the right time, and it come out all the way. What happened with Johnson? It looked like you just let him go down the back stretch, waved him on almost. I don't let nobody go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, uh, he just he was just straight back there. Uh, my car was loose, and I finally got the tire real hot on the right rear, and he was just sitting back there, and uh, he finally just went on by me. I mean, there was nothing I could really do about it. I mean, if I could have run with him, I, it's one thing, but I, I couldn't catch him. Every time I passed the gas, the right rear tire was spinning. Well, Bugs Harefield, he sets in victory lane tonight. Let's go to Mark Potter and some of our other late model drivers. Eddie Johnson's in here talking with Richmond Times Dispatch. And, uh, Eddie, I tell you, uh, tell us what happened over there in turn number two. Well, you know, we were racing hard with Kevin. I kept trying to get outside of him, and he wasn't giving any room out there. And then I finally worked my way and got underneath of him and went down the corner. And I was on the bottom of the racetrack. I know I was on the bottom of the racetrack. It was on the white line just about. And, uh, you know, he just came right on down. And, uh, you know, I got marks right here behind the right front tire, and I know I was far enough in there. And, you know, I don't mind racing with anybody, but they need to give you some room on the racetrack to race. It's hard to say. We were just racing real hard. And some people say I come down. Some people say he hit me. I it's hard to say. It was just racing. You've got to be pretty dejected after uh, leading the first 96 laps and then with uh, 96 or so laps and then find a go away. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody had the car to get around me, so I think I had the car to beat, and I guess we'll just be back next week. What happened after the caution come out? The, the one after we wrecked. I just rode around on caution. Just rode, so we didn't hit anybody on the racetrack or anything? I just bumped and let him know I didn't like what happened, and I guess I got my point across. You know, after the accident happened, I'm riding around there and got myself back up and been going around, and somebody comes and nails me from behind on the caution. And, uh, you know, uh, that stuff ain't right. You know, you wreck somebody on the caution, you'll get somebody hurt out here, and officials need to start doing something about it. That ain't the first time that they've done that. They need to start doing something about it or it's going to keep on going on, and it's just not fair. You know, I come out here, I have to work on my race car and do all the work on my race car. Nobody pays my way. And it's just, you know, it's just not racing like it should be. On K95 night here at Southside Speedway, 
the pole sitter Shane Lockhart, not really the night you were looking for. What happened? No, it really wasn't, but uh, we just got the monkey on our back right now, and we had two right side flat tires, and this thing won't run with two tires on it, so I uh, knew we weren't going to do anything there, but the car was good, and you know, we, we're going to come back out here next week, and hopefully, you know, we got a program going a little bit better, and um, hopefully we can get us a race or two here. When you have a problem like that on the, you know, basically from the very beginning after that first caution, do you use this opportunity as a practice? Well, you know, the tires that we put on it were the tires we ran last week, so really the tires weren't that good, plus the stagger and all was a lot different, and, and uh, all we're doing is out there trying to ride around. In case a few cars fall out, you might get a few points, and, you know, things like that. Got to do something. Come in here and stand. Might as well go out there and watch the race. Well, Jim, I mean, uh, Lynn, tough break for you on the first lap. What happened down there? It's my luck, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I guess just got together and, uh, you know, that's what happens. Tough way to start the uh, the night off, but uh, how bad did it hurt the car? Well, it tore all the front end underneath it, so, you know, ball joints, tie rods, drag links. Same old stuff. I guess I'll just come back next week. Lynn O'Neill goes away from Southside with a damaged race car and a damaged ego. Well, Kevin, uh, Kevin Grubb, <laughs> he looks a little bit like his brother, doesn't he? Actually, Wayne, uh, first of all, you were running second. You end up with a flat tire. You can come down pit road. They held you for two laps. Why? Well, um, got all got a little lucky there at the beginning and um, got up to second and ended up blowing a tire under caution. And they, so I just sat up there in the turn to bring out the caution again and. Uh, you know, it was 50-50 chance there, so we, t we took the chance and we, we, the odds were against us. But, but let me, I mean, the Link Belt crew, we've been working real hard all season long and, I mean, keep, keep trying to keep in the top five. You know, th some nights things don't go our way, but, you know, some nights they do. So we'll just keep getting at it and see what we can do. Just wasn't a night to be a grub at the Southside Speedway. Welcome to the broadcast, Wayne Baltz, driver of the car number 13. First time out at Southside uh, Speedway this year. You've got to be tired. No, big experience though. <laughs> <laughs> big experience. This place is it's it's hard. It's really hard. It's but we'll come back and try again next week. Now you basically came out just to get your feet wet tonight. Did you have fun? That's the main question. Oh yeah. It rolls. It, anytime it rolls, it's always fun. Well, you had a girlfriend over here that was just worried to death. She paced, I think she put 100 laps on the infield, and she <laughs> walked around as much as you did. But Wayne Balch was out here having a good time here tonight at the Southside Speedway. Speaking of the Southside Speedway, race in action here once again next Friday night. Saturday night, Mass Car will be in action here. Those are the little cars. The Mid-Atlantic Modified Tour, well, we head down to the Langley Speedway next Friday night for a Friday family fun night down there. They'll open the gates at 530. Tickets, only $8. Come on down to Langley and Hampton and watch the Mid-Atlantic Modified Tour, Mass Car, Pure Stocks, and four-cylinder uh, trucks as well down at Langley. Well, we had a great night of racing action. Make sure you join us next Monday night right here on Southside Speedway Illustrated. For Yvonne Alzero, Freddie Clark, and Jerry Reed, I'm Mark Potter saying good night, everyone. Well, Phelps found victory lane for the first time. McRae couldn't catch him, but McRae continues to control the points. In the Charger event, Kevin Minner became the first visitor. Damn, I'm having problems tonight. What you're looking at now is what could be the center controversy tonight. We'll find out. Kevin Grubb starts on the outside of row number one for the late model stock car wrecks. Let's check in with Freddie Clark upstairs. He's got all the racing action here at Southside Speedway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here with the butlers, I tell you, uh, Freddie's giving away tickets now? Yeah, on TV, you know. She's to to Richmond girl. next oh, week, right? Now, the answer to last week's trivia was Tommy exactly. Ellis. She's right. a smart little girl. She knew that. Tommy didn't who? Tell her. Tommy Ellis. Oh, okay. I didn't tell her. I thought you, you said her. something else. <laughs> you wouldn't lie, would you? <laughs> no, not you but once. Did you look it up or did you nah, just I do wild it. guess? I do it. <laughs> Won't a wild guess. <laughs> I, who really answered the question? I did. Okay, so you called his line. No, my daughter called the line. Oh. But I guess winning is real easy on Southside Speedway yeah. Illustrated. And let's give a uh, happy birthday to Carrie Butler, too, whose birthday right. is tomorrow. Right. Or it was Saturday uh, when you see tomorrow. the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> happy birthday. It was Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> right. I tell you, you got another one of those tricks in the hat for tonight? I got one underneath the seat. One more left. It's a shotgun. That's what it is. David Goat's got it. And he's going after Lynn O'Neill tonight, so we'll see what happens, huh? Lynn O'Neill, who is that? <laughs> Oh, we'll find him. We'll bring him down to you so you know, okay? Stay tuned. The drive-in movie's coming up when we return. <laughs>
I want to get a copy of last week's tape. Oh. Y'all sell them? <laughs> Do we sell them? Yeah, do you sell them? <laughs> you know, they call him Flash. They call him Flash for only one reason, because the drivers say now that when you're shooting pictures over at turn two, you've got this high-powered Flash, and they see this flash of light. It's like the second coming. Well, that's what they say. Uh, well, Robert, you talk too much. Since you don't have enough money to buy them off me tonight, I'll bring them back for you next week, okay? I got enough money to buy them. All you got to do is walk around the rest of the night without them. How about a $50 bill? Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Uh, at least a thousand dollars. I don't have enough. <laughs> Taking another step, going up to Hooters Cup, and uh, Mark Potter just asked you 125 resumes for drivers to fill that That's seat. Right. Roughly, it's 125. Um, we sent out roughly about 85 letters saying, you know, thank you for the interest and everything like that. Uh, we're looking for someone that has basically got two to five years' experience in a late model, uh, very comfortable in a late model, well known. Uh, uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, there's not one particular favorite that drives a baby blue car that you've really been working on, is it? Uh, <laughs> I, like the paper said, I'd love to have Eddie. That's something, uh, you know, he'll have to decide at the end of the year. Well, we wish him the best. Travis Ryan, he moves up to help out a team, a new team in Hooters Cup. Two car team. Two cars, that's right. Deuce. It takes two. <laughs>